Hello, my name is Craig Knutson. On behalf of Yamaha and Believe in Music, thanks for taking the next several moments to allow me to take you through the new Clavinova CLP 700 series. You know, I'm proud to say that I've pretty much introduced every Clavinova in history, well, Clavinova history since 1983, proud to say that. However, I do have to tell you that this CLP series has features in it that I never thought I would ever see in a Clavinova, much less a digital piano. As an example of this, just to kick things off right away, true story, when I sat down at the prototype of this instrument several months ago, one of the things that I do, and I know many people may do this, when they first sit down at a piano, all right, they'll sort of adjust themselves on the bench, and they'll push down the sustain pedal and play a couple of notes. Listen carefully. If you noticed when I did that opening number, I pushed the pedal down first, and you heard this. Now, I know it's hard to hear that over the internet, but one more time. That is the sound that the dampers make on an acoustic piano when they are raised off of the strings. It's sort of this whoosh sound. If you push it down really hard on an acoustic piano, the pedal rod actually hits the bottom of the key bed. And you can actually hear that. The first time I heard that, I actually had to look over here to make sure I was playing a digital piano. It really played tricks on my mind. For just a second or so, I said, wait a minute, are there strings in this piano that I'm playing? And I looked around. This is really cool. This is part of the damper noise that's been added to damper resonance on the new CLP series. So authentic and really plays with the mind. As I go through the other features of the CLP 700 series, I recommend you get your hands on the Clavinova catalog. This is very well done. Talks about all of the different models that are available in the Clavinova line in addition to the CLP series. Talks about the different cabinet styles and finishes that are available. And then of course delineates all of the different features of the instruments and we're focusing on CLP. Let's start off with cabinet improvements of the new CLP 700 series. This is important. Years ago, Yamaha did a study with Moritz, pulled all the Clavinova owners out there, and they asked them, where do you put your Clavinova in your home? 67% of all the respondents said it was in the living room, not the family room, not the den. That's my indication that cabinet really is important to consumers. So the new Clavinova series has a newly designed cabinet that's both functional and uh, visual. You can actually see the new cabinet design of all the legs in the new CLP 700 series. It's more of a curve. On the left here, we had the CLP 600 series, which is more right angles. We're taking cues from the CFX to add more curvatures in the cabinet. Even the grand versions had a vertical straight drop down next to the keys, and here you can see that curve. Another trend that's going on in this industry is people don't want to see the buttons. That's really the bottom line. The CSP Clavinova is selling like crazy because it has no buttons. The Disclavier, we move that box under the piano because people don't want to see the buttons, all right? Well, first of all, we did move the buttons from the player's field of view in recent Clavinovas to over here so they're not distracting for the player. But on the new CLP 700 series, we actually removed the buttons over here. Do you see this over here? It looks like a smooth cheek block, but the second I touch it, this cheek block comes to life and you can actually see they're, it's called touch sensors, all right? And these touch sensors, you can adjust them, and after a certain amount of time, they will disappear, and it turns back into a regular cheek block. This is so cool. If you're sitting back here and you're looking at the piano, it looks like an acoustic piano. Another little trick that we've done is we've moved that pilot light. Now, early... CLPs had that little pilot light, that little red light. If you're sitting back and you're watching someone play, you, you actually could see that little light. That was there to tell you that the Clavinova was on. Well, in the spirit of making it look like an acoustic piano, we've removed that pilot light and now we've put that in the power button over here, much more discreet where you don't see it. Well, that same survey stressed the fact that the most important features of a Clavinova to our customers is the sound of the piano and the touch of the piano. And I'm happy to announce that in the new CLP 700 series, all models, there's an all new sample of the legendary CFX flagship grand and an all new sample of the time honored Bosendorfer Imperial, both of which you can see right here. All new samples, both for the sound that comes out of the speakers and new samples for the headphones. I'll talk about that in a moment. One of the improvements is we're using more samples per note. 
so that you have more expression for those notes. More samples per note in the CLP 700 series compared to the 600 series. The result is a greater dynamic range as part of Real Grand Expression 2 featured in the series. Now, I want to talk about headphones a little bit. There's a thing that we've been talking about for a couple of years now called binaural sampling. And I need to stress the following fact that you may not be aware. Do you know that when you plug in a pair of headphones into a clavinova with binaural sampling, the sample switches from the sound that goes through the speakers to a different set of samples for the binaural sampling? Different set of samples. What is binaural sampling? Well, it's where we're actually sampling both the Bosendorfer and the CFX with a special type of a microphone that's in the shape of a human head that actually has modeled ears where the microphones are inserted and they record that from the position of where someone is playing the piano. It is such a shockingly amazing sound. Um, one reason why it creates tricks on the mind is if you sample this, these sounds are going to hit this ear slightly before this ear and the opposite for the bass notes. True story, when I have people try on the binaural sample headphones, I tell them, I said, when you put these on and you start playing, you're going to think that the speakers are still playing and you're going to take off the headphones and you say, can you hear that? People laugh because they'll sit down and they'll start playing. They'll turn to me and say, can you hear that? And I say, no, I can't hear that. And they take off the headphones and they have to hear it for themselves. They got to play, not hear the sound put it back on, they think that they're hearing the sound of the piano. It's sort of a sense of space of not wearing headphones is what binaural sampling gets for you. But the things I want to stress is it's two sets of samples. One set of samples that goes through the speakers, a different set when you plug in the headphones. And the new CLP 700 series recorded both samples at exactly the same time with both sets of microphones. Binaural sampling was done at the same time the speaker sampling was done. So you're hearing the same piano under the same conditions. That's new on the CLP 700 series. Let's listen to these for a moment. In fact, let me turn on the screen of the Clavinova so you can see what I'm looking at. If I go to CFX Grand, of course, beautiful sample. The Bosendorfer, a more European sound. Completely different sample. Another iconic piano, of course, is the Yamaha C7, probably the most recorded piano in the world because it's found in more recording studios than any other piano in the world. Then there's the U1. This is the most popular piano in the world. The upright piano that is actually asked for by name. Piano teachers and students walk in and ask for the U1. That's a sample of an actual U1. We didn't take a grand piano and change the EQ. It's an actual sample of a U1. In addition to these four iconic pianos, CFX, Bosendorfer, C7, and the U1, the Clavinova now includes what we call historical pianos. All right, quick history lesson. Who invented the piano? Actually, the piano forte. His name was Cristofori. He was credited, actually, with creating the piano action. The instrument of choice prior to that, of course, was the harpsichord. <laughs> The issue with the harpsichord is it could not be played with expression. If you played hard or soft, notice there was no change in the dynamics. The piano forte, hence its name, piano forte, soft, loud, was created by Cristofori because of his action. Instead of plucking the string like a harpsichord, the string was struck with a hammer. Guess what? The CLP 700 series has a sample of an actual Cristofori piano built right in. Let's listen to it. If you look under a new category in the CLP 700 series under Forte Piano, listed under Scarlatti. Scarlatti was the composer known for playing a Cristofori piano. Now let's play. If I play softly, there it is. I can now play the piano Forte with expression. There's a sample of a Cristofori piano built right in. Now Mozart turned to Walter from Vienna to create a piano for him. We have a sample of that. Beethoven turned to a piano manufacturer in London called Broadwood. We have a sample of that. And then finally Chopin turned to Pleyel, which was made in Paris. Wow, you can hear the progression over time. Now I'm playing the same song over and over because I wanted you to hear the different characteristics. 
What a great way to demo though, however, with the built-in demo function where if you go to demo and you go to these Forte pianos, you actually get someone actually playing Scarlatti here. Or if I go down to Mozart, with that sample you hear some Mozart. With Beethoven, again, you hear for Elise, of course. But amazing to think this is what Beethoven heard. And then last but not least, Chopin. And these are all built right into the CLP 700 series. What a great way to listen to the sounds that the composers were listening to when they were composing the actual songs. Amazing, cool, new feature. The CLP 735 and 45 have a Mozart and a Chopin piano, and then the 775 and higher add the Scarlatti and the Beethoven piano. And uh, I just think that that's really so cool. Actual samples of these historical pianos along with our four iconic Yamaha pianos. To support these amazing sounds and samples, you should know that the sound system in the CLP 700 series has been improved across the board. Specifically, Yamaha has taken steps in the 700 series to raise the energy center. Sometimes if you're sitting at a digital piano, speakers that aren't in direct line with your ears, some of that sound might escape below you. We're raising that energy center so that the sound that the person playing hears is more similar to what is heard in the room. This is done by changing speaker positioning within the cabinet. This is changed by changing the EQ that's more optimized for this type of environment. And last but not least, for the 775 and higher, this also includes the inclusion of transducers in a clavinova for the very first time. Now, transducers are used in our hybrid pianos. A transducer is like a speaker. A speaker transducer is normally connected to the cone, which moves to create sound waves. This transducer is mounted against an actual piece of wood to create those sound waves. The result is the same type of 3D sense of depth that you hear when you're playing an acoustic piano. Yes, you get the, the, the feeling that the hammers are hitting the strings in front of you, but these high-end transients that are more 3D in the acoustic piano coming out of the cabinet and coming out of the soundboard are reproduced by that transducer mounted on an actual piece of wood in a clavinova. Just an amazing sound you've got to experience in person. By the way, I think one reason why Yamaha is able to accomplish this is their entree, so to speak, into the home theater system, creating speaker systems for that. Did you know, here's a stat, in 1950, it was Yamaha that coined the phrase for the very first time, the phrase hi-fi, when they introduced a hi-fi phonograph player back at that time. In addition to sound, customers tell us that the touch of the Clavinova is very important in their purchase decision. So let's talk a little bit about Clavinova actions in the CLP 700 series. We've got several new improvements. First of all, solid wood keys are always featured in a Clavinova. Solid wood is much more resistant to warpage than a laminated key. So you want solid wood inside the keys. Furthermore, synthetic ebony and ivory key tops are highly absorbent. It's a porous material that is much more resistant to slippage compared to, say, a slippery plastic key. That's an important feature. We've improved the key stop in the action of the Clavinova 700 series, so it's less of a thud when it goes down when you're, say, playing headphones. But most importantly, the new Grand Touch S action is introduced on the 725 and 735 and 45, and it features the following. It takes cues from the regular Grand Touch action, which takes cues from an acoustic piano. Did you know in an acoustic piano, the white keys and the black keys are mounted on a fulcrum or a pivot point. And just like a seesaw, all right, when you push down the front of the key, the back of the key goes up. When you move in towards that pivot point, it gets harder and harder to push down that key. That's why in an acoustic piano, the white keys and the black keys have different fulcrum points. Most digital pianos have one fulcrum point for the white keys and the black keys, which means if you move in to play the black keys, that's getting closer to the fulcrum point, so that means it's going to be harder to push down the black keys compared to the white keys. You can see where I'm going. The Grand Touch S action, now featured in the entry-level CLP 725, has different fulcrum points or pivot points for the white keys and the black keys. What an important feature.
Now there's touch for your fingers, but there's also touch considerations for your feet. CLP 700 series feature a continuous controller on the sustain pedal, so you get no sustain, full sustain, and then everything in between. If you start pushing it down, half pedaling, incremental pedaling. If you want to practice the nuances of delicate pedaling, a CLP 700 series is perfect for that. You also may want to consider the fact that there is what we call a GP response damper pedal. An acoustic piano, when you start pushing the pedal down, you're not lifting any dampers, so it's easy to move. Then it gets a little more difficult to move when you start lifting those dampers, and then it gets easy at the very end. We simulate that in the 775 and higher. And by the way, Remember, we talked about this feature at the beginning of my video, which is the whoosh sound. <laughs> the sound the dampers make when they lift off the strings when you press that damper pedal. This is done in the piano room. Now, the piano room is like a piano selection room. With acoustic pianos, people will go into a room with all these different acoustic pianos so they can select exactly the right piano for them. The piano that's got the right brilliance to their taste, the piano that's got the right touch for their taste, the piano that's got the right resonance. Well, you can do that right now in the piano room. If we go to the piano room, you can put the lid in different uh, positions. You can change the brightness of the piano. You can change the touch of the piano. Man, if you could do this to acoustic pianos, wouldn't that be easy? You can change the reverb, the room that the piano's in, the amount of reverb. You can change the tuning. Virtual resonance modeling has to do with all these wonderful resonances. I turn it up all the way. That's where the dampers, as I mentioned, uh, create this sound. That's actually called damper noise, which is right there. You can turn that on and off. There's string resonance, which is the interaction of the frequencies among the strings. And then there's duplex scale resonance. If you turn on a certain function called backup setting, It'll save that piano even if you shut the instrument off. So I recommend you turn on that function so that you get your selected piano every time you turn the Clavinova on. Finally, a couple of other brand new cool features built into the CLP 700 series. Yes, we've got that metronome in there. Not too many people like playing along with a metronome. But a lot of people like playing along with a rhythm. Oh my gosh sort of a cool metronome, right? But look what's going on on the CLP. Do you hear a bass line? <laughs> we took a modified version of the style section out of a CVP and a CSP, and we put it into the CLP 700 series for the first time. It'll pick out a bass line based upon chords that you play on the keyboard. Talk about spicing up your practice time. And to spice up the sound image of the entire instrument, we've added a three-band EQ to 735 and higher. Simply go to the system menu, go down here to sound, and there it is. If you like a preponderance of bass, perhaps, you can do it right here in EQ. And last but not least, we've got built-in Bluetooth audio and MIDI. We had Bluetooth audio before, now we've added Bluetooth MIDI. What does this mean for you? This means you can now attach Smart Pianist without any external equipment whatsoever. Let me show you. Let's open up Smart Pianist. Let's go to the connection for the instrument. CLP 785 in this case shows up because it has Bluetooth MIDI built in. Once it connects the Bluetooth MIDI, I'll get a dialog that says, do you want to connect Bluetooth audio? I've already done that in the regular location of a iOS or a Droid device that you connect Bluetooth. So now what can I do? Well, I can go into the piano room. I can adjust the lid directly, or I can go to the voice section, and I can add and layer strings. I can split the keyboard by adding a left voice. Look how easy it is to move the split point. Is that easy or what? <laughs> All right. So uh, this is one of the benefits of Smart Pianist. Smart Pianist also allows you to add additional features. If you load a MIDI song, say something like, uh, how about Canon and D? It'll actually show you the score as part of the app, which is amazing. Probably the coolest feature, though, is this allows you to take any song in your iTunes library, any audio song it'll evaluate the audio and it'll give you a chord chart for that song so here's Danny boy I'm gonna play the file 
It evaluated the audio and look at this. It figured out the chords from nothing but the audio. Look at that. I'm just reading the chords. It even has different colored sections. It knows. Let's turn down the volume. Now, if it creates a chord that you disagree with, you stop it and say, no, I don't want that to be a G sharp minor. No, I'd rather have that be, well, it gives you other choices there. I could switch that to A flat minor. That's easier for me to read. <laughs> all right. You can also change it to, look at all of these things, minor major sevenths with a C bass. You can go nuts with that, and it saves that in the file even when you close it. Well, there you have it. That's the new CLP 700 series. You've really got to experience it in person because a lot of the features are creating this 3D effect to make you feel and look like you're sitting in front of an acoustic piano. Thanks so much for listening and on behalf of Yamaha and Believe in Music, look forward to seeing you again in person next year at NAMM.